Hey guys, it's James here from EU Bass Guitar and if you're looking to get into the fretless bass, today I've got five killer tips to get you going quickly. If you're into that, please do check this video out right to the end. Hey guys, this is James here from eBass Guitar and today I'm here to talk about the fretless bass. Uh, the inspiration from this lesson came from one of my subscribers in the bass lab called Paul Rouse from Spain. He uh, asked me if we, I could give a demo of this bass which often sits up there. Uh, this is my fretless bass. So what I thought I'd do uh, is have a little chat about the fretless and tell you a little bit about it but also give you five killer tips based on my experience uh, playing it because it is a little bit of a different animal. Also, I mentioned the bass lab there. If you're not in the bass lab, this is uh, my private Facebook group. If you're not in it, there's a link below. Please do get involved. Uh, there are a bunch of really passionate uh, bass players and they're having some amazing conversations and hanging out together. So please do get involved. Love to have you in there. So anyway, Let's talk about the fretless bass. This is my fretless here. This is made by a company called Overwater in the UK. They make phenomenal basses. I've had a bunch of them over the years. Um, and I'm going to take things right back to the beginning and actually talk about what is the fretless because some of you may be right in those early stages of going, well, uh, what is the fretless bass? Why is it important? What does it do? Um, and Hopefully I'm going to answer those questions for you right now. Effectively, the fretless bass um, is, what, as the name suggests, it doesn't have any frets, which puts a huge bunch of challenges in there for us as bass players. But what it does is it creates a very unique, uh, very unique sound because it turns it into an intonating instrument. Okay, and an intonate, int <laughs> I can't say that, an intonating instrument is anything from the violin family. So uh, the cello, the violin, the viola, the double bass, anything where you have to pitch the notes. The frets will always give us the pitch, okay? It's preset. But with this, we have to then place our fingers in the right places to get the notes out of it. So the fretless bass has been around roughly since the 70s. It was pioneered by an amazing bass player, which I'm sure you've heard of called Jaco Pastorius, uh, who ripped his frets out, filled them in, and then put epoxy resin all over the neck and created that legendary fretless sound. Um, for me, there's another major guy which I think is really important to uh, the fretless kind of thing, and that's a guy called Pino Palladino, uh, a British guy, or Welsh in fact, uh, who is, uh, who's, I mean, has had a phenomenal career, still does have a phenomenal career, but he did a lot of amazing fretless work in the 80s, which just is so iconic in sound. So the way I approach it is there's the jazz thing here and then there's kind of the pop thing. They kind of, there's sim definitely similarities between the two. Um, one of the things that Jacko started doing uh, on the fretless basses, which was so kind of iconic, um, was to uh, start taking jazz tunes, uh, bebop tunes by musicians such as Charlie Parker. And uh, the major one that he did was a tune called Donna Lee that he put on the bass. And so he started playing bebop on the bass guitar. And I think he was one of the first guys to ever do that. Uh, the thing that he did was he did it on a jazz bass. And what he would do, is he'd roll onto this pickup here. Okay, and what you get is that really, really punchy sound, okay? Uh, this is another Charlie Parker tune, which I love. I'll just play you a little bit so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. This is called Ornithology. Um, and so let's just play it so you can hear it. So going forward, the other kind of major fretless sound is uh, more of a Pino Palladino thing that he was doing with artists like Paul Young and Alita Adams uh, in the 80s. This was more, in my opinion, more of a fill-based kind of idea because he was just playing uh, sort of more ordinary kind of pop bass lines, but then we'll put some incredible killer fills in and slides in there. Um, but what we'll do is I'll just show you a little bit more what that sound is all about because he definitely used the full range of the instrument too. What he'd, so what he'd do is he'd put 
put it on both pickups. I think he's actually using a Stingray as well, which has one big fat pickup there. And then he'd come, come out with lines which were just a little bit more like this one here. Okay, beautifully melodic kind of chord tone arpeggio things which use the full range of the neck. So, so big slides like that and then Okay, so you can really hear the glissandos and the slides around the neck, which create that kind of characteristic fretless sound. So guys, I'm gonna share with you five tips on getting started on the fretless bass. These are tips from my own experience. Um, first of all, uh, I wanna tell you that I'm not a specialist fretless player. There are some bass guitarists out there which have spent years specializing in this instrument. It's not something I've done so much, but I do get called to play it. I spent my time uh, mastering the double bass, which is kind of a fretless instrument of sorts. Uh, well, it definitely is. Um, but I, I've got some tips which will make going from the fretted bass to the fret, sorry, from the fretless bass to the fretted bass that much more simpler and these are kind of based off my own experiences and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story first of all uh, which will kind of illustrate the first tips of my first really good proper fretless bass. Um, I've had a big relationship with the guys from Overwater for over the years. Uh, they're amazing, they make some phenomenal basses, do check them out. Um, and I played one of their five string jazz basses for years, really really great instrument, sounded really really good or does sound really good. Um, and I had that bass on a tour and I'd finished the tour and I'd come back with a little bit of money and I wanted to invest it in another bass. And I had this great sort of romantic idea of having the matched fretless made with it. So two basses, a fretted and a fretless, which looked identical, except one didn't have frets. So same finish, same electronics, etc., etc. So I had them build me that bass. Um, and the one thing I wanted it is I wanted a bald neck. So there were no lines on it. Um, and uh, I can remember when the guys at Overwater going to me, they're just about to sort of build it and go, are you, sure you, are you sure you don't want lines on there? And I was like, no, I'm totally serious that I don't. I want to really learn how to master this instrument um, straight away um, and, and, and kind of do it properly or what I kind of thought was properly at the time. Um, when this bass turned up, it was an amazing instrument. I mean, they did a magnificent job on it. Uh, but what I found was having five strings um, and uh, like a bald neck, so I didn't know um, where to put my fingers. I had the dots there, uh, all that kind of thing, but there was less help giving me that, given, being given to me. Um, and what I was doing, I was doing quite a lot of high pressure work at the time, uh, like in the West End of, in theatre pits. And what composers will do is write for the fretless, and I'm sort of quite happy to go in and play it. But what I'd done is I'd had my <laughs> this sort of sort of just mammoth instrument built for me which I just didn't quite ever get comfortable with and I remember this really frightening moment of looking at the neck because I needed to know where I was and then looking back at the music and, and I've got no idea where I was. Thankfully my ears took over at that point and I, and I kind of got out the situation unscathed but it was definitely a scary moment. The other thing is the bass kind of ended up quite heavy as well um, and that's because they used an amazing piece of wood for it but it was too heavy kind of just for my frame really and because um, I'm a relatively smallish kind of guy. Um, that's not to say all over water basses are, are, are kind of heavy basses because they're not as this bass here proves and so I kind of I got a bit of a complex about using this bass um, and it started gathering dust apart from kind of when I was being paid to use it. So I thought this isn't really good because I want to be able to spend time and enjoy the instrument. So the guy, I struck a deal with the guys at Overwater and I said, look, what I want is just a four string bass, a four string fretless, okay, lined. As you can see, it's got lines on there. Okay, and I want you to make it out of the lightest piece of wood the good wood that you can find and just make it a really nice simple instrument. It's got very light tuners on it. They did fulfill the brief brilliantly. Um, and this is what I ended up and it, it's a really lovely bass and ticks all the boxes as far as I'm concerned. So my first tip is to you is to get a line fretless because if you don't have the lines you just don't have that help, you don't have those markers and it makes transitioning around the neck shifting positions just so much simpler. Um, having them there, I underestimated when I had that first bass built, um, uh, the, the necessity for lines, um, how much easier it would make my playing, especially if you're not playing the bass all the time because I do spend a proportion of my time playing double bass too. So if you're, if you're not um, sort of 
a specialist fretless player, it makes moving over that that much simpler. Okay, so that's tip number one, use a line to get lines on your bass. Okay, the second tip, which kind of feeds into that little story, is, um, is use four string based. Okay, start your fretless studies off on four string. Okay, um, I kind of wanted to get into the five string because I had this really great romantic idea of matched basses or that kind of thing. It's much, much simpler to start playing this stuff on four string. Okay, so you may be wondering, how do I actually play this thing in tune? And the answer is relatively simple. If you've done your homework and spent a lot of time studying the uh, fretted bass, actually making the transition is relatively simple. Uh, if you learn the one finger per fret technique possible, which is this, like that, and you make sure you're playing just behind the frets, essentially everything transfers really quite easily, I found. Okay, and you've built the hand shape and the position there. So you, if you do enough work on the electric bass, moving over is pretty straightforward. Uh, so I really do encourage you to spend time in the electric bass de de developing the one finger per fret idea, uh, using all the various different fingering uh, concepts, uh, using the different courses that I've created for this stuff to develop the left hand technique on electric, and then you can bring it over quite easily onto on to the electric bass, okay? Moving on to tip number four, okay, is use the open strings. Um, as, bass, as electric bass players, we can often get into this thing where we're a little bit scared of using the open strings. Um, and I came from the world of double bass, I studied that a lot, where open strings are just commonplace, okay? Um, because it's just such a much a bigger physical instrument. Um, so I'm very comfortable using open strings, but the thing that we can do is, because we're pitching and we're intonating, we have to put our fingers in the right place and in, effectively in tune, um, what we need to know is we need some reference point to um, that we know is in tune, and those are our open strings. And so what we can do, a great example, is to put down an A there, okay, and just pitch our octave like that, okay, okay, up to our third, okay, and just really work on getting those notes in, really work on getting those notes in tune. Okay, and you can do this all over the place, um, especially as so much music can, can use B in the keys, especially in rock and roll music in the keys of E, A and D and that kind of thing. So wherever possible, try and use the open strings to pitch off and have some relevance point. Even if it's just a passing note, hit, hit an open string in your line because it would kind of just start to recenter your intonation, okay? And intonation is our ability to intonate and play in tune, those finite movements that affect the pitch. And moving on to tip number five, okay? Um, and this is one that I learned from my double bass teacher, but works perfectly brilliantly um, on the electric bass, is to slide in notes. You would have seen me doing that in riff number four. Okay? Okay, if you get those little slides in there, okay, they don't have to be big kind of like I was showing you there, okay, but even just a little one, okay, from just underneath, okay, is enough for our ear to go, um, is to tell us when the note is in tune, just that tiny bit. If we just go like that, and I'm just going to put my finger down roughly round an A like this, okay, it isn't quite in tune, but when I when I do that tiny, nice little slide into it, I my ear will tell me when it's in tune. So those are, those are my five tips. Let's just run over them once more, okay? Uh, the first one is to buy yourself a lined fretless, okay? Before you go onto a, my advice is before you go onto a board fretless, buy a lined one. The second one is buy a four string to start off with. If you wanna go into fives and sixes, and even further, you can do in due course, but if you're looking to make that first step into that, start on a four. Second is really learn the one finger per fret technique. Do that on the electric, that will sort of do all the groundwork, okay? And then you're, that will build your hand shape. Uh, the second is to really use the open strings for intonation, um, okay? Anything which is gonna give you a fixed pitch reference um, is really, really helpful, okay? And the last one is to slide into the notes, okay? 
If you want to download the PDF from this lesson where I've uh, listed out all of the notes, uh, that kind of thing, please do check out the comments below this video um, and you can get grab yourself a copy there. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please do like and share it. Please do let me know what you think of these comments. Please comment below this video. Let me know what fretless you play. Let me know what your experiences were playing the fretless because uh, I've shared mine with you. Um, and yeah, please do give this a like and share on social. Cheers, I've been James from eBay's Guitar and I will catch you next time. Cheers, bye bye.